Welcome to our 10th top 10 video, the final one that you're gonna get. Today's topic of discussion is... Top 10 Josh and Rachel memories or moments. So, okay, it might sound a little conceited that we saved our list for last, but the truth is we love making these movies for you guys, and we love putting out stuff that you guys watch. And we have so much fun doing it, especially when we work together. So I'm gonna let Rachel kick things off with our very first topic. All right, so number 10 is our Fanticon filming. Some of you may know that we went to Fanticon one year just to promote the movies, and then they asked us back two years later, mm -hmm. um, and we went, and it kind of was a disaster, which you will hear about in the documentary. It was terrible. It sucked. But it was the first time we filmed in New York, the first time we filmed at a, a big event for what we could film, which, again, you'll hear about, but that's why it makes our top ten list. Coming in at number nine on the top 10 Josh and Rachel memories and moments list is one of my favorite bloopers of all time. I wrote this really funny line for Rachel <laughs> where Rachel is trying to ride it hard. You want to explain it, Rachel? Um, not really. No, it was <laughs> uncomfortable then and it's uncomfortable now. So you know what? Let's just cut to the clip. Enjoy. <laughs> you're way more motivating to me when you're on my ass giving it to me hard. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> and I forgot to cut you off. So I was like, I thought it's what I wanted, but then I realized that you like it rough. Yeah, actually, I kind of do. When you're rocking that ass, <laughs> can we just giving it just to take you? It from here. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you're way more motivating to me when you're on my ass, really giving it to me hard. <laughs> that was so sorry. That was so sorry. I mean, you're way more motivating to me when you're on my ass, really giving it to me hard. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. I closed my eyes. I tried. Coming in at number eight is in Theta, actually. In Theta, we find that Josh is sick, and there's this whole scene of us talking about it, and it's kind of not realistic because we're very funny about it, and we took so many takes because it was just the two of us filming that we literally ate up hours of footage just not being able to deliver our I, lines. I think that's when we have the most fun, honestly, when it's just me and Rachel. Like, we love working with the other actors, but <laughs> Rachel talks about it in one of her interviews in the documentary that us filming together is sometimes dangerous. Not productive at all. Yeah, because we just get so off topic and it's so funny. But this scene to me was just so hilarious because I tell her I have cancer and then her response, you know what, I'm not even going to tell you about it, just watch. Till what? Till you die? Yeah, one fucking month. It, it just seems like such a short time. That's because it is a short time. Um, super supportive, thanks. I mean... Have you made a bucket list? Um, yes, bitch, of course I have. Oh my god, I always wished I had some sort of terminal disease so that I could make a whole list of crazy shit to do. I know. The bitch I'm dying so I don't give a fuck what you say mentality is so free. Mm, I don't want to be free. I wish I was dying now. Shut up, you're just saying that. No, for reals. I'm like, jelly. You should be. Number seven on our list of Josh and Rachel moments is when we escape in Stab 5. <laughs> we do escape. It's uh, m one of the first and few times that we fully escape unscathed. Exactly. And Mostly. nobody else in our other movies ever just gets away. So I hop into Rachel's car, we drive out of that parking garage, and you don't see us again till Stab 6. And I think that's why that moment stands out for us. Aside from the fact that watch the documentary that there was a few issues with the door on Rachel's car while we were filming. <laughs> but aside from that, that scene was so much fun to film. And like I said, we got away w with everything. And you find out in step six that I was actually a killer. So Rachel was driving a killer away from the scene. Coming in at number six is digital Josh and Rachel. This was something kind of new for us. We had to find a way to make Josh in the movies with it making sense. Because um, I was dead. Well, making sense and... The way that we did that was by making him a digital version. He was essentially an app. <laughs> so it was uh, quite memorable to try and feel that out. Most of that filming, again, was just the two of us um, because I lived in Pennsylvania at the time. So I came up specifically for that. And uh, again, not super productive. Had a lot of fun, lots of laughs. It was actually really funny, too, because I filmed my stuff before Rachel came up, the digital version of me. So Rachel just had to react to the digital form of me and try to time all of her lines to make sure that she could squeeze them in whether or not I had left enough time for her or not and what I recorded. So it's funny that we have scenes together that we didn't actually film the scenes together. I don't know. It's just a great moment. And no, you cannot download me as an actual app, though. That would be fucking cool. Maybe in the future. Say, yeah, let's, let's merchandise. <laughs> Coming in at number five on our top ten Josh and Rachel moments list is when Rachel quit Stab 5. Like I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is such an important scene because Rachel's character 
at the beginning of the movie is kind of my bitch. She's my assistant. She does everything I say. And then finally she just can't take my shit anymore. So she lets me have it real fucking good and walks right the fuck out of production. What so I should have done is this. <laughs> And that was number five. So coming in at number four is When Josh Kills Me in New Year's Resolution. This was uh, interesting. It was the first time that I was actually murdered. For real. For real. <laughs> um, and we talk about it in the documentary, so you'll definitely have to check that out. But it's a lot of fun to watch. It was a lot of fun to act. I was scared, I'm not gonna lie. I was scared too. Holding a real knife up to your best friend is a little scary. I'm like, please don't let me kill her. I need her. <laughs> and I think when filming that was definitely noticeable because he was a lot more dainty with the knife than he normally would have been. It shows you how much more I like her than everybody else. I love everyone, don't get me wrong, but clearly Rachel's my favorite. Number three on our list is our costume montage from Theta. Now, I don't know about you, but this is one of my favorite things to film in Theta. We just had so much fun. Dancing with Rachel at any moment, like, I think I'm a good dancer, but then Rachel busts out the funniest moves, and I even try to mimic them, and she's still just funnier than me in it. Like, I just love watching Rachel dance. So what I'm learning is Josh is a good dancer. I'm so bad it's funny. <laughs> but the costumes also were really, really fun to keep seeing us come out in all these different outfits, and honestly, when we would see each other, it was funny on set, too, because we'd come out of these rooms and be like, oh my god, what are you wearing, you know? And some of those moments even make the, make the cut of the film. You see us kind of turn to each other like... <laughs> doing this. <laughs> and honestly, it was just a fun day of filming because the music was blasting in the apartment and we were in two separate rooms and we had kind of coordinated through the wall what costume we would come out in next, but we didn't see each other in it. So it was a lot of fun and I'm really sad that the full version of Theta didn't come out because this is definitely one of the best moments in my opinion. I totally agree. So we're getting to the bottom, but our number two slot goes to Stab 5 Auditions. Now, Stab 5 auditions were completely unscripted. We had a basic outline of what we wanted to do, but it's the first time that we literally just kind of winged it. And uh, you should watch it, because it's, it's interesting. It's freaking hilarious. I'm telling you, bouncing off of Rachel... Literally? <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> I don't know, man. It takes your mind to different places. Like, you do something that you think is funny, and then Rachel just finds a way to bring it up another notch, which has even happened while we're filming these, you know? I've said something, and then she'll be like, oh, you should say it. I'm like, that's totally right. You're great. That's... <laughs> and that's exactly how it was filming those Stab 5 auditions. I think we did more laughing than actual filming that day. And all I really remember, the main part of it I remember, is us trying to do a moose impression. <laughs> And mine sounded like Fran Drescher because I went, meh, <laughs> Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> and what was honestly the best part about this is that there's so much footage of it that there's a huge chunk of bloopers that is just footage of this. And finally, the number one moment on our top 10 Josh and Rachel moments list is us creating stabmovies.com. Now, like we said in our interviews, which you'll see in the documentary that premieres tomorrow, that when I first wrote the script, and then involved Rachel after. But us together created everything. And that is probably the closest relationship I've ever had with anyone in my life. Like we, stabmovies.com is our baby. And I couldn't do it without my baby mama. <laughs> oh, parenting here. Exactly. So, and with I, that said, we couldn't have created Stab Movies without all of you. Because as we've said several times, and I'm sure it's said in the documentary again, this was never meant to be a thing. It was a small project we were doing for fun because we were kids in New Hampshire that had nothing to do. And we posted it on YouTube as a joke and you took it and ran with it. And that's how Stab Movies came to be. It would have never been an actual website, a series of content, a YouTube channel without you. So thank you. She literally just gave me goosebumps. I'm like, I don't know if you can see them on camera, but that was so touching to me. And Rachel and I honestly really do love working together and creating stuff for you guys. So the creation of StabMovies.com should be the number one thing on all of our list, no matter what it is. Because without creating this, we wouldn't still be doing this a decade later. Ooh, I'm old! <laughs> Girl, at least we look good. Hey! Well, one of us does. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> uh, so thank you guys so much for watching these top 10 videos. Do not forget, tomorrow! 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 Oh, that's a red-headed, red, -headed, red curly hair. You have two gingers singing tomorrow right now. <laughs> this is like grown-up Annie for you. Tomorrow is the big day. StabMovies.com Behind the Mask premieres on our YouTube channel. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you'll be able to live chat with some of the stars from the movies. And at 8 p.m., the documentary will premiere and set aside a big chunk of time because it is a long fucking documentary. It's split into 18 parts. 18 parts because that's how many films and short films we produce. So thank you guys. 
so much for watching and we really hope you keep coming back. Absolutely, and get ready. This is gonna put Netflix and chill to shame, so give yourself some time and enjoy.